Hello and welcome to Free Dive Passion. This video is part of a series about training for depth during your pre-season or the winter. Guys, if you're stronger, it's only going to make it easier to move your fin, easier to maintain your form, and you're going to build up less lactic acid. So of course, training strength for freediving makes sense. It's not only going to benefit your physical form and technique, but it's going to affect you psychologically as well. If you imagine coming up from a dive and you haven't done your strength training, your form's going to start to break down, it's going to cause a huge lactic acid buildup, and your legs are just going to die. How's that going to affect you psychologically? Negatively, obviously. But if you're strong, if you can maintain that form and work your way back up from depth, no problem, then of course, psychologically, that's going to be a great benefit to you. I think within freediving, there's a lot of misconceptions about strength training. People assume if you start to lift weights overnight, you're just going to become massive and you're going to lose all of your flexibility. But the fact of it is, if you want to become big, it's going to require huge lifestyle changes you're gonna to have to eat loads and train loads. It's gonna take over your whole life. If you just start to lift a few weights, all that's gonna happen is you're gonna get a bit stronger. So long as you stretch every day, and after, especially after you've lifted weights, you're not gonna lose any flexibility. If you think about sports that use weights, these guys aren't huge and they're not unflexible. If you think about sprinters or football players or swimmers, all these guys lift weights but they're not massive and they're not unflexible. I think within freediving, because our sport is so psychological, it's easy to forget about the physical aspect, but it wouldn't be wise to totally neglect your body and your strength any more than it would be wise to neglect the psychological side of any other sport. If you want to build strength, then without a doubt, the most efficient way to do it is by lifting weights. But it's not as simple as just going to the gym and picking up a pair of dumbbells. You need to be specific in your training for what we need as freedivers. And what we need as freedivers is strength, but not mass. You don't want to build a lot of muscle. So the best way to train for that is to do a low rep range. Somewhere between three and six reps is ideal for building strength and it doesn't necessarily put much muscle onto your frame. If you did want to put muscle on your frame, the rep range would be about eight to 12 reps. And anything more than 12 reps, you're going more into conditioning your muscles. Conditioning has its place within freediving, but there's much more specific exercise that, exercises that we can do in order to condition our body. The other thing that you need to think about is what exercises that you do. There's no point if you want to build strength and go into the gym and start to do bicep curls or isolation exercises. What you need to build strength is compound movements. This is going to build functional strength, which is most transferable into sports. If you want to make strength training part of your routine, then there's some precautions that you should understand. One is that these compound movements are actually quite complicated. It's nowhere near as simple as it looks. So you should check out exactly what form is appropriate for each technique. I'm going to post the links to my favorite strength training YouTube channels, which will give you just about all the information that you need in order to progress. If you're still struggling, then you can get some coaching as well. It's very important to obsess about your form and just because you've watched these videos doesn't mean you'll understand everything right away. You get better at lifting from lifting. So try and develop your technique to quite a good level before you start adding weights because if you're doing something wrong then it's going to be very easy for you to injure yourself. Another thing to think about is that lifting heavy weight is very tough on your central nervous system. Some freediving exercises, it's also very tough on your central nervous system. So if you start lifting weights and you continue doing your same um, freediving routine and you don't compensate for that by eating more food and having more sleep, then you're likely to become overtrained. 
So if you want to start lifting weights, make sure you have a balanced routine so you don't become overtrained. Another thing that I'll mention is that your, your muscles will gain strength faster than your ligaments, tendons and joints. So in the beginning, you'll be progressing so quickly, you'll be getting strong so quickly that maybe the rest of your body can't keep up. So it's not wise to keep adding weight, adding weight, adding weight the whole time because maybe you'll cause yourself an injury. So every now and again, when you reach like a, a certain level, it's better just to stop, keep doing that weight for maybe a week or, or even two and then start to progress from there. This is giving your ligaments, tendons, joints a chance to keep up with your muscles. Now I'm in no way qualified or experienced enough to start to teach you these movements. Like I already said, I'm going to give you the links to some channels which are, which are definitely qualified and experienced enough and they have some really great tips. But what I'll do now is I'll give you a rundown of my routine and I'll give you some of the pointers which have really helped me to progress in each of these movements. Right guys, I alternate between two different workouts. But both workouts will start the same way. When I get to the gym, I'll do some stretching, some mobilization, and some rolling. The idea is to increase my range of motion and to help prevent injuries. I start my workout with 10 pull-ups followed by 10 dips and then one minute rest. And I'll repeat that four times. I understand for a lot of people it's hard to do 10 pull-ups, so you can just do as many as you can, rest, and then keep going until you reach 10, and then you do the same with the dips. If even one pull-up is difficult, then you can have a friend stand behind you, put one of your feet in your friend's hands, and then you can push off to help you complete the rep. Workout A consists of squat, bench press, and bent over row. As you can see, I slowly build up the weight. The lighter the weights are, the higher the rep range, and the closer I get to my five rep max, the less reps I'll do. For these warm-up sets, I don't have any rest between the sets. So once I've finished my set, I'll put the weights on for the next one, and then I'll go right into it. Once I've reached my five rep max, I'll have a two minute rest, do my five reps, and then keep going that way with two minutes rest in between each five rep set. The squat is the king of compound movements. It will make your whole body stronger. But it's also the hardest one to get right. I've been practicing this one for a year and I'm still discovering new ways to improve. The most important thing is to brace. So at the top of the movement, you take a big breath. You then hold that breath and tense all your upper body. This is gonna give you support throughout the movement. Once you reach the top of the movement again, you can release that air and take another breath. Keep your shoulder blades tight and pulled together. This is also gonna support your back. When you squat, imagine just bringing your hips down directly between your feet. Don't sit back as if you're about to sit in a chair. Keep your elbows tucked below the bar. The bench press is a great exercise, but it's also very easy to get injured in. You need to protect your shoulders. So to do this, keep your shoulder blades pinned together tight. And as you come down, Keep your elbows close to your body, don't let them flare out. You should arch your back so that your buttocks and your shoulders are the only point of contact on the bench. And remember to brace, so take a big breath at the top of the movement and hold that breath throughout the whole movement until you get back to the top again. As you can see in the bent over row, it can be quite a vulnerable position. So again, bracing is going to support your upper body. Make sure that your back is always straight while it's under tension. And as you bring the weight up, keep the elbows close to the body. This will protect your shoulders. One thing I'll mention is that I always make sure my bench press and my bent over row is the same weight. This is to stop any imbalances forming in your body. Workout B consists of the front squat, the overhead press and the deadlift. You can see it's basically the same concept as workout A. Only the deadlift has one set of five reps. The reason is the deadlift is quite taxing on the central nervous system and any more than one set can lead to overtraining. In the front squat, be sure to brace at the top of the movement. 
the bar is resting on the shoulders and neck and it's just supported by the hands. To keep it in this position, as you move down, you'll have to keep your upper body quite vertical. The overhead press is quite a complicated move. To protect your lower back, keep your buttocks tensed as tightly as you can. To protect your shoulders, keep your elbows forward. You'll have an arch in your mid back as the bar is lowered, but as you push it up, you'll push your upper body underneath the bar. You brace at the top of the movement. In the deadlift, you have to protect your back. So be sure to brace at the bottom of the movement before you take up any strain. Keep your shoulder blades tight together to protect the upper back. Don't jerk the weight, slowly increase the strength that you're pulling until the weight lifts off the ground. And you should straighten your back and legs at the same time. These eight movements form the basis of any strength training routine and they'll make your whole body stronger. I finish every session with a 20 minute stretch and some rolling. Guys, if you would like to plan your own training and execute your own training sessions independently of a coach, then you should go online and check out our 10 day retreats. If you don't feel like you're ready for that yet, then we also offer coaching. That's all we've got time for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, then give us a thumbs up. If you want to catch the rest of our videos, then subscribe. And if you want to help me out, then share the video. All right, take it easy, guys, and dive safe.